Hello and welcome to Sporting Lives. Uh, my guest this morning, Eddie Gray. Welcome. Morning, how are you? Uh, very well. Um, Eddie Gray, MBE. I should have addressed you, as yeah. I suppose, as well. Uh, welcome along. Many thanks for your time. Um, it's a great pleasure for me as somebody who grew up watching you play and entertain us as you did to, to have a, a few minutes of your time uh, to look back on those days and to just get a feel for you, Eddie Gray, as the character, the personality. We, we know your personality on the football field was as an entertainer uh, and a hard-working one at that. Um, but what sort of makes you tick? If we can wind the clock back to the start of of life in Glasgow, um, first and foremost, and I mentioned there in the build-up, wearing those uh, the green and white hoops of the Celtic. Was that sort of all you ever wanted to do as a as a child? Well, you know, I was a huge Celtic fan, and my dad used to take me to the games. Um, I ended up training at Celtic Park. Uh, they were the team that you know I supported as a lad, and you know you remember growing up in Glasgow, um, and all you did was play football. Uh, out in the streets, basically. Um, and it was an enjoyable time. And, and I was fortunate enough, obviously, you start playing with your school team when you're a young age, and then I played with the Glasgow school boys, and then the Scottish school boys, and then come down to Leeds. Um, which surprised me in a bit, yeah, how I ended up at Leeds, because uh, they were probably the furthest from my mind. I'd been to a few of the big clubs in England, but the only place I wanted to play was Celtic Park. But when I come down to Leeds, it all changed. You met the manager, Ron Revy, and he persuaded me and my mum and dad at the time that it would be the best thing for my future, to come down to Leeds, who were in the old second division as it was then. So that was a bit strange as well, because the, you know that particular time, I had a choice to go to a lot of clubs and a lot of the clubs with big names in English football and, and obviously Celtic, but I decided that I would go to Leeds. Was that something about, about uh, Don Revy, the man then? Did, did he sell you a dream, if you like? It was Don Revy, the man, without any doubt. Uh, I mean, I didn't know. I knew there was a few Scottish players around and uh, I'd watched the Scottish school boys the year before I played and um, Peter Lorimer and Jim McCallaghog uh, were in the Scottish side and they both came to Leeds. Uh, you know, and I remember that when the scout, John Barr, uh, the, scout, the scout that approached my dad was called John Barr. He ended up becoming full-time scout for the club and worked for me, actually, when I was manager in the 80s. Um, and it was, basically, I was just coming down for a, a weekend just to have a look at the place, but Don Revy sold the club to me my mum and dad um, and obviously they sold the club to me uh, when I was a young boy when I come down first I was 14 and he actually took me training with the first team which was a bit different then because at that particular time it was Christmas 1962 um, traditionally at the time when football clubs hold trials for ball, boys for all over the country it's changed now obviously with academy systems but the major holidays were when football clubs, you know, like Easter and Christmas, summer holidays when football clubs had trials for, you know, for, for boys that the scouts throughout the country had recommended. So I come down and and that was it. When I get back to Scotland after a long weekend, I told my mum and dad it was, I wanted to play for Leeds United. Uh, and did they fully sort of support that at the time or were there... Was there a bit of doubt because, there's a lot as of, you say, nobody had heard of Leeds really? Well, there's a lot of doubt, you know, you know, I was 15 and, you know, for by the fact that uh, Leeds United weren't a fashionable club then, uh, my dad always wanted me to play for Celtic. Uh, the, the thing about it is leaving home as well when you're a young age. You know, you come down to England and you don't know what's in front of you. But I soon settled in very quickly. I come down with my best mate, Jimmy Lumsden. Uh, Jimmy and I played with the Glasgow schoolboys and Scottish schoolboys and Jim come down, we both come down at the same time. So that was a big help because my mum and dad were friendly with Jim's mum and dad and obviously I was friendly with Jim. He's, he's still my mate to this day. In fact, I seen him last night. <laughs> <laughs> and so that helps you settle a bit better. Yeah. Um, 
What about Leeds itself? I mean, what was that like? Was it a culture shock from, from the big city of Glasgow to come down here, or were they pretty well, similar in the 60s? Uh, well, the two cities were more or less industrial cities, whatever way you looked at it. You know, Leeds was a big tailoring place. Glasgow was a massive city, as you know, uh, an, an industrial city. You know, the shipworks and things like that were still going strong then. Uh, but the two cities have completely changed. I was back in Glasgow last week to see my mother, and my mother's still living. Uh, she's 98 now. Um, so I went back up to see my mother, and Glasgow's changed so much. I mean, you come in the centre of Leeds now, it's a different city. I mean, I think Leeds is a great city now. I think it's fantastic. It's one of the best cities in the country for me. Yeah, uh, plenty happening. And I think that's been probably built up since the, the 80s has been sort of regeneration and yeah. the financial companies all yes. moved up here and across the armories yeah. and all that yeah. sort of things. Yeah. Um, but I just wondered what your thoughts were on, on what it was like um, back then. Did you ever feel, was there that, that sort of homesickness in the early days? Did you want to go back or was it always, you know, settled in quickly and no. quite plain sailing? No, I never go homesick. You know, I used to enjoy going home, you know, when, when you got the opportunity, but I never got homesick. In fact, the funny thing about it is if you're home for a few days, you know, once I seen my mum and dad and my, my brothers and sister, you know, you couldn't wait to get back and start playing football again. And that was what it was all about. I mean, some of my best friends in life, I met when I first came to Leeds for by Jimmy who came with me, you know, people like Peter, Lorimer, um, Mick Bates is, he was a great friend. I used to go and stay with Mick's mum and dad in Armthorpe near Doncaster for weekends. So you meet a lot of different people. Uh, you're fortunate enough to go to a football club that's on the up. Uh, and you soon realised, um, I soon realised there was a lot, a lot of great footballers at the club. I mean, when I say great footballers, I mean really great footballers. So that was a big help as well. But the one thing that Don always taught us when we were young, you know, however it goes for you, whatever you do, don't walk out disappointed in yourself. Put everything in you. And it's something over the years I've always said to young players, you know, when I've been coaching at the academy and even, you know, under David O'Leary and when, when young players come through. You know, that's the thing about football. I mean, you're born with a certain level of ability, but I'll add to that, you've got to work hard, you know, physically and train hard. And Don taught us that. And that was a great thing about Don. Uh, he always told you to have confidence in your ability, you know, the courage to play. That was Don's favourite, you know, like, I always think of the three C's, you know, confidence in your ability, concentration level where you play, and the courage to use your ability. Which, for the way you played, was obviously music to your ears, I guess, then, because you were so good at taking players on. If you, if a manager is going to stymie that with his comments and and kind of, you know, rein you in, that's the last thing you'd wanted to hear, wouldn't it? No, Don was never like that, you know. Uh, when I first, I mean, sitting here, I don't like people calling me a winger still. I'm a frustrated midfield player. <laughs> I've been all my life. I mean, I played left half, if, if you, you know, going back number six for the Glasgow school boys all the way through Scottish school boys. I mean, I made my debut for Leeds, I played midfield. And, I, you know, the first games I played, I was in midfield, and it was just done. You know, we had abundance of midfield players. Well, at that particular time, Bobby Collins was still playing. Although Bobby would get injured in Turin. Johnny Giles had came out of the club, Billy was there. Um, and Don just asked me if I'd ever go outside left. left he says, because, you know, I think it'll be easy for you. You, you can run, you can get by people. So I, it didn't make any difference to me where I played. I mean, I always, I, I always believed I could have played anywhere, and I did. You know, I ended up playing left back. I played, I played at sweeper at times. Yeah. You know, played centre forward. Um, I just, you know, really get tarnished with being a left winger because that's <laughs> obviously where you make your name. Uh, but to me, I, I was always be, I always, I always thought, uh, like a midfield player even when I played in the wing. For the balance of that of that great, the, the, of the teams that played in that great 10 year period, mid 60s to mid 70s at, at Leeds, that was a, a pretty much a masterstroke from the manager to to stick you out there. Well, when you've got Peter on the right hand side and there's two great strikers. Well, and Well, when you actually think about the team overall, I mean, 
Peter came as an inside forward, basically playing up yeah. front off a striker. Peter played outside right. Terry Cooper, when I came, was an outside left. Norman Hunter, when he first came to the club, was a midfield player. So that's where Don had his genius. His knowledge of the game was terrific. He had great people working for him. Uh, and he basically, you know, moulded the team, for want of a better word. You put Norman alongside Big Jack, Terry Cooper at left back. Even when Paul Rooney first came to the club, he played as a, basically as a forward. So Don had a, a good knowledge and a good vision of how he wanted to play the game. He could see things in players that when, when he asked me to play outside left, um, it wasn't a surprise to me uh, because he, he explained to me, you know, the formation that he, he looked at the team and, you know, how strong we could be if we played properly, you know, different setup with Johnny and Billy Central midfield players who <laughs> two of the best midfield players I ever played. I mean, I'm not saying I'd have gotten to the team in midfield with they two around, but I would have gave it a good go. <laughs> I think you might have been okay. Well, it would have been these days. It would have been part of the rotation system, yeah, Eddie. Yeah, surely, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to ask you about inspirations when you're growing up. I know I've seen you on record saying that Willie Fernie yeah. was uh, the sort of player you wanted to be like. Uh, he was known, having read up about him, for being a real skillful ball tied to the foot oh, yeah. player, uh, and of course uh, that was something that, with which you're synonymous as well. Well, I always love watching Willie Fernie. I mean, I, I watched Bobby Collins, but Bobby t different type of player to Willie Fernie. I would say Bobby was a greater player at, at the end of the day, but Willie Fernie was a wonderful, wonderful player. I mean, he used to say he was greedy on the ball, you know, because he'd never pass it. But great skills, great awareness, a great player to watch. The type of player you begin to pay money to watch. He was wonderfully skillful, great Celtic player, great Scottish player. Uh, and I just enjoyed watching Willie Fernley play. And you mentioned Bobby Collins. Uh, I guess another inspiration as well. He played for Celtic, played for Everton, Scotland. Right. And he was, if anybody, the sort of catalyst, wasn't he, apart from Don, for for giving that team a bit of oomph in the early days and, and really taking things towards Division 1 football? Well, if, I think if Don could be sitting here now, uh, and I know the rest of the players would say it, whoever they are, uh, I think Bobby was the best signing Don ever made. Uh, to transform the club and uh, a club that hadn't done anything but what you were bringing when you brought Bobby Collins to the club you were bringing a born winner you know he was a winner he was only used to winning things with Celtic he wasn't to Everton he was a great Everton player and Bobby when he came to the club was supposed to the end of his career Bobby was football of the year here when he's 35 I mean that shows you how good Bobby was he uh, was tremendous and I mean I remember saying to Johnny Giles Years ago, you know, you played for Manchester United, you just won the FA Cup with Manchester United 1963. You joined Leeds United that summer. I know he had a follow-up with Mark Busby. Why did you come to Leeds? He says, Eddie, I came to Leeds because I knew Bobby Collins was there. Now, for somebody like Giles to say that, who was probably the top player I played with, um, was a great accolade to Bobby Collins. And I think everybody at the club felt like that. And Bobby made the club club grow. I mean, and Bobby could, for want of a better word, play any type of football you wanted. He could mix it. If it was a physical game, he was very strong physically, even though he was small in that year, he was a giant of a man. And uh, he could also play football. I mean, a great footballer. So you've got all the ingredients. You're, you're a teenager, Peter's a teenager. Um, you've got Bobby Collins, Big Jack's there already. Uh, Don is starting to make signings and some of those signings again very astute you think of Mick Jones and you think of Alan Clark are two that, that come out straight away you've mentioned Johnny Giles of course as well so that team quite quickly over a period of two or three seasons builds and becomes then cup finalists against Liverpool which I know you didn't play that day but you would be a part of that experience yeah. and obviously very very close in the league yeah I think that you know, that when the club go to the second division, the old second division and the first, very, very quickly, they acclimatised to the big league. Uh, but the reason for that was they had the players. And then Don added to the squad, as you mentioned. He brings a great centre forward in, Mick Jones, you know, and he brings in one of the best finishers in the country, the country I've seen. 
who was right up there with the best, Alan Clark. I mean, so Don had a lot of players in and around the club that came to the club as youngsters, even, even including Big Jack, even though Jack wasn't a youngster when I got in the side. But Don transformed Jack as well. I mean, he, he told Jack that he buckled down uh, the ability to play for England because Don had done that. Uh, and Jack, you know, bought into it as well, you know. I mean, I think when Jack was a bit younger, he, you know, a bit of a rebel, Jack. No, not for the point of view doing anything wrong, but just played the game how he wanted to play it. And I think that Don taught him uh, that if he, you know, conformed a little bit to his ideas and what he should be doing, he'd become the best centre half in the country, which he, which he became. Who was playing um, at six and who was playing out on the left wing when you were making your way into the side? Who were your competitors within that environment? Well, competitors for me were midfield players. But the only thing I would say about that is even though there was Bobby Collins and, and Billy Bremner and Johnny you know, and a, a few other players in and around the club, I never felt inferior to any of the midfield players. You know, that was just... I think you've got to be like that as a young player. You know, if you join a club as a young player uh, and you want to get into a team and make strides quickly, if you're not getting confidence in your ability, you get swept under the carpet. You know, that's that's the thing about football. You've got to have that desire, the faith in your ability. And when you mention, you know, the number six jersey was Norman Hunter, but he was a defensive player then. But also, what I've got to say about Norman Hunter, Norman had reputation for being hard. Norman was a great footballer. Norman was a great passer of the ball. Could bring people into the game. Knew how to play the game. Worked extremely hard at his game as well. But, you know, going back to the question you asked at the start, who was the number 11? The number 11 was Albert Johansson, who was a terrific player. Uh, when I watched him in the old second division, he was he did as much as anybody to get Leeds into the big league. Uh, playing with Bobby Collins and Bobby knew his strengths and his strengths were he could get by people he could score goals as well Albert a tremendous pace and Bobby utilised that pace knocking balls over the top with defenders and Albert would be after them and phew, electrifying um, but uh, when Don asked me to play uh, after the basically in 1966, when I made my debut in midfield and played a few games in midfield, he came in to me and he just says to me, Eddie, I would like you if I go outside left. Uh, and I'd, you know, I'd have chatted. Done. I've, I'd never played outside left in my life, no, not even as a schoolboy, any sort of game. Um, and I'd have chat, you know, we were chatting about it and I'd say to Don, but I think I'm a midfield player. Uh, he says, well, I'd like you to ever go outside left because I think it'll make the team stronger. No disrespect to Albert Johansson in any way, shape or form. You know, because funny enough, I played with Albert. I mean, people talk about goals I scored against Burnley. I was playing midfield that day. Albert was playing outside left. So I did play with Albert when he was playing outside left. But Don just felt that um, in his mind, uh, it would strengthen the side. And as I say, that's no disrespect to Albert, who was a terrific player. So that's why I became an outside left.